To another episode of the Chad Townsend Show. I'll be your host, Chad Townsend. And today I have a very special guest. But before I get into that, I want to quickly say that today's podcast is proudly sponsored by Cronulla Beer Co., your newest local craft beer. I'm actually, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm actually holding a can of it right now. This is the first ever can off the production line. It is an absolute beautiful thing to look at. But that leads Gorgeous. me <laughs> that leads me into today's guest and that is my best mate. Best mate and business partner, Goody Bruz. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having us, Chatty. Mate, big chat today. Been a big twelve months. Like I said, Goody and I, we are business partners alongside a few others in Cronulla Beer Co., which has just recently launched in the last two months. But um, mate, let's firstly start, I guess, a bit of our relationship. You know, we've known each other for what twenty five years. <laughs> Something, yeah. We both would have been five or six. Yeah. Back in back in the day, hustling on the mean streets of Yarrawarra. <laughs> <laughs> we grew up together we live around the corner from each other we played football together at the same local team and we went to school together we played school footy our, our parents are friends but it has been quite a journey hasn't it yeah it's been crazy you know i guess you know the last 25 years but i guess this last 12 months in particular everything that's happened around you know covid restrictions yep. how it's affected your lifestyle as a professional athlete but i guess you know looking at the silver lining of it in some sort of positive aspects probably potentially wasn't going to be able to give us the foot in the door with the new business had we not have had this extra time to allocate, I guess. 100%. I think, you know, as bad as COVID's been this year and a lot of people, all of us have been affected in some way, it's also created opportunity and I think smart people have really, you know, knuckled down and really gravitated towards the opportunity that, you know, has been provided with more time mm. is what you're getting at. Yeah, one, a, a really interesting way that I was sort of forced to, to look at it, at, and it wasn't just from the circumstances of during COVID, but ever in your life where you're kind of forced to move a bit slower and focus on things that truly are important to you, it's really interesting what you can potentially get out of that time. Definitely, 100% agree. All right, let's get into it, guys. Well, as I mentioned, Goody, myself, we are co-owners of Cronulla Beer Co. alongside a few others, and I want to tell you guys a bit of the story today. Basically, it's been a 12-month journey up until today of getting this business, this company off the ground, but I want to take it back, Goody. This is probably 12 months to the day, actually. Now, as I mentioned before, Goody, his family... We are, you know, we are fa- or pretty close family friends and I invited Goody and his parents over for just a few drinks and an afternoon cheese platter and Goody was on crutches at the time and he, and he came in and he, he said to me, I need to talk to you about something. And I was like, all right. And then his parents pretty much walked in the door straight away and but we had a, a pretty quiet afternoon and then all I wanted to know was what, what's, he, what's he got to tell me because I mean, we used to chat, we, we chat each other about everything and then... Um, Anyway, we had the cheese platter and we had a few drinks and then Goody said to me he was ducking out of the next door and I was like to him, I said, Dale, do you mind if I go down and speak to Goody? And then, you know, I'm, you were at next door and it just kind of happened that you were sitting at the head of the table and I went over there, I was sitting next to you and I, and I sat down and if you want to go on to the next bit of the story, you'll be yeah, like... Yeah, you were sort of nudging me going, so <laughs> what have you got to talk about? <laughs> it's one of those things where I wanted to know. Yeah, and I was like, for starters, like, oh... I felt, I felt like a bit of a dog because I didn't know that you were coming down to meet the boys as well. And I was like, oh, I probably should have just given you a ride with mum and dad in the car as well. But as we were sitting there having a chat and you said, so what's this that you, you wanted to chat about? And I said, kind of a, a bit, bit apprehensively as well, saying, oh, I've, I've got this idea that um, me and one of the boys have been chatting about and I wanted to sort of fill you in on to kind of get your thoughts on it kind of with the idea that you were hoping that you'd be interested in potentially being a part of it you know and that was to 
start our own craft beer company, you know, and, and the name immediately was, was what I, I gravitated towards and I think was kind of maybe what was the bit of a light bulb moment for yourself, Cronulla Beer Co., you know, being in the Sutherland Shire here and, and craft beer still a pretty emerging kind of scene. Definitely. A hundred percent, and I remember, and it takes me back to you know, like I said, Goody and I, we've got a long history. We're best mates, and you know, we grew up in the nineties. We're nineties kids. We grew up with things like Rob Deerdeck Fantasy Factory and Rob and Big, and used to, you know, try and. You know, talk about ideas about you know one day doing our own business. We used to go for coffee pretty much once a week and talk All about the time. you know yeah. maybe you know doing something fitness or gym or something like that. You know, clothing. And Goody mentions this to me. What, mate, Chatty? What do you think of Cronulla Beer Co? And I looked at him, and straight away, just tingles went up up my neck. And I was like, mate, I, I love, I love it. I love the name, and I, I, I just. I just wanted to get into it straight. My, my mind is just ticking over, ticking over. And, and being, you know, a professional athlete, I've always wanted to have a side business or have a side hustle where something I can, you know, sort of start. And I've thought about a number of ideas, but this one, when Goody just mentioned it to me, I was like, mate, let, let's, we need to, I'm on board. Let's, let's, let's take this by the horns and let's run with it. But what do, what, what do we do? Yeah, like how do we even get started? Because it's like a complete, you know, new injury, in, uh, industry to yep. us. Yep. Um, you know, yourself being an uh, athlete, have spent, you know, quite a bit of time studying as well, financial planning and things like that. Yep. Um, myself and two of our other business partners, you know, both in the fitness industry and our brewer, Tim, you know, as we mentioned on our podcast, he's a photographer by trade. So we'd probably poured a few beers and drank plenty of them between us. But as far as getting a startup like that off the ground, like there was a lot of conversations that needed to be had. There was a lot of, um, I guess support needed from the right people to try and have shun us in the right direction if we we're ever going to make anything of this. Definitely, 100%. And uh, as I mentioned, we've for people that might know, we're at Next Door at Cronulla, which is pretty much right on the beach, an absolute amazing location. They do really good you know, uh, breakfast, really good food, and they're known for their Sunday sessions. And it was a Sunday that we're sitting there, right? And, and we'll get into a bit later on, but it just turns to happen to be that, you know, just under 12 months later, we're actually sitting at Next Door drinking our own beer yeah it's pretty outrageous at next door. It's, a, it's a bit of a trip like and it's the definitely the novelty still hasn't worn <laughs> off when i'm walking in with a couple of cases to see the aloosh boys or see brookie or something like that and be like far out i can't believe this is actually happening hey eh? it's pretty funny oh i love it so the next day the first thing we basically wanted to do was register the business name yeah wanted to make sure that the name was protected because essentially like that was our brand and that was pretty much what we were going to market with. Well, we sent, yeah, we, we had to kind of remain as excited as we were about the project. You, you probably remember we felt the need to stay pretty tight-lipped about it Definitely. for a while. A long time. And then, and then the more conversations that we had about you said it well, like, oh, you know, I've always wanted to have the, the side hustle and something you can sink your teeth into a bit. But then the more that we looked into it and started to learn more about the opportunity that we had, it was like far out, boys. Like, we have to do this. Like, yep. we're going to have to. And it's it's no, you know, golden goose egg or anything like that. There's going to be a lot of time that goes into it. But I think that's um, been one of the most enjoyable things for me this year is how grateful i am to have been able to spend that spend that time with you boys as well because Definitely. it's just been super rewarding you know the business um while we're now transactional and in a few venues and things like that we're so far away from you know turning it into an actual money-making venture but it's our time spent in it is it's been rewarding you know it's 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 really satisfying to see something start from nothing and, and evolve into something tangible 100 percent. and i'm the thing that i'm really so thankful for is the fact that you know i get to talk to my best mate on the phone every single day and we're like there's a few you know fires that we have to put out and things like that and um as there i'm sure there is with every business but the fact that we get to talk about it man it's like well, that's, that's a, incredible I think as well i was kind of thinking on my way here as well like had we not have had this project to work on like we still do our best to sort of be in contact with each other every other week but 
it's it definitely you know brought our relationship closer together this year because with everything going on with yourself at the moment you know two kids another one on the way footy restrictions this year yep. me owning another business like it's it's difficult as you get older to get that time with your mates you yep. know 100 percent. it's been I, sick and i think that's why you know it was so important with assembling a team to get everything done which i think has been tremendous like the, the fact that we've got it like a core group a, a team that's just you know everyone's sort of gravitated towards their own roles and what they've sort of good at and we're still sort of established i guess that also as well and and to my limited still what i would say limited knowledge within the business world I, I, I to me it really is about assembling a team and assembling a team basically means putting the right players in the right positions and and that's what we're working out yep. but to see that you know even in the you know the fire of just trying to keep up with like the christmas hype and stuff like that at the moment like we're getting there and gravitating um closer towards certain tasks than others may be but we're getting it done and having fun along the way, which is the main thing. 100%. So, all right, we went from idea to registering the business name and then obviously with starting business, there's a few things that need to need to happen and that sort of cued on to probably one of the things we needed to do early on was, you know, our logo and our website and then our, our following that, I guess, comes our branding. And one thing we spoke about was we wanted to source all of our work locally. 100%. We wanted to give local people, you know, the job of helping us create essentially what we're going to move forward with. So if you want to, I guess, elaborate a little bit on the, I guess, our logo or our, essentially our branding and how that came about. Well, Absolutely, because, you know, we haven't had the opportunity to brew our beer locally. You know, we're probably a ways away from being able to have our own production site here locally in the Southern Which is what, Shire. Uh, which is long term, we oh, want absolutely. a brewery in the That's Shire. That's what we're going to have, yep. absolutely. Yep. But, um, so it was really important to us to have a product that is a representation of the area here that's going to be consumed by locals. Well, we want to support other locals, young, small business owners as well, yep. to see how they can help us get this off the ground. Uh, design, logos, things like that, something that I, I love and, you know, you know, I could fancy myself and say that I've got an eye for design. I'm not a designer though. Like I can't, I don't do Photoshop. I don't do any of that tech sort of stuff at all. So um a good mate of mine, Nick Larda, was the first guy that I reached out to that sort of put the idea like in sort of a can format, like the concept of like what we're trying to think. And originally, even if you chuck us that can, like that was like one of the, do you remember the, the original conversations like within the first 40, 80 yep. hours, we were talking about, you know, what Cronulla is about is like, what would we put on the can? Yeah. What would represent Cronulla? What do you think? You want to look at the can and you want to think Cronulla. Definitely. So we thought the, the sand of our beaches yep. and that sort of beach, like coastal lifestyle and, and, and the, the wave on the can each time that we will change the variety of the beer to you know develop our core range yep. is going to be a different pastel colour of zinc that a lot of the time can be... Uh, you know, compared to the colour of some of our surf clubs and things like that down on the coast as well, which Definitely. is pretty cool. So we're stoked with how this one, one turned out. So Nick helped us get that like onto a sort of canned format. But as for the the logo, the brand, the text, the unique text that you see on the in the Cronulla Beer Co. was um, we reached out to Jake Savas from Savvy Signs. Yep. And he was unreal in sort of taking this to the next level and <laughs> next level and <laughs> um in in doing using his skill set to create a completely unique text like um jake does some amazing work like for different companies sign writing locally and all over sydney but the thing that caught my eye that he does really cool is the fruit shop text you know, yep. like peaches, two ninety nine, like that. <laughs> and that's essentially what the text is now. Like a bit more sort of whipped out, and with some little highlights in it and things like that. Yep. But bringing that together, our the wording of our of, of our name, our, our brand, has basically essentially turned into our logo as well, which should be hopefully you know the reoccurring sort of consistent theme in a lot of our marketing and stuff like that moving forward. So definitely. And that's one thing, again, which is one thing I really love, because when you think about fruit shop, 
And if you look closely on the can, and if you're watching on YouTube right now, I'll lift it up and I'll, and I'll show you. Um, but yeah, the, to me, like the the, the the fruit shop text, it, it screams local. Like, yeah. you know, you got your local fruit and veg shop, and, and again, they're yeah. a, they're a small small, independent. small business, yeah. um, usually family run, and that's the, they're the people that we wanted to really support. So I guess after we had the um, yeah, you know, logo and sort of can design. I remember you coming around here, and we were actually drawing cans, and we drew like a, you know, little the little uh, pilot, a little surf club hut on there, and we we're like, what are we going to put on there? And um, you know, so we ended up designing the can, which we're so incredibly happy with. The next step, I guess, was we needed a website, mm-hmm. and we were like, we can probably. I reckon I probably could have made the website, but there's no way I could have made it to the quality that it is today. So again, we reached out to you know a local business, Reese Carter and Ryan Eli and Cass, and they they done an incredible job of creating our website, which is exactly what we wanted, isn't it? Yeah, and something that you know I think will continue to evolve. You you know as you know seasons change, even you bring in more products. You know your website that is a complete digital representation of your brand has to be forever changing but they did such an incredible job and i think you know those initial sort of catch-ups that you had with them was you know paramount in them kind of understanding like the i guess you would sort of say ethos of the brand yep definitely and they were after like you know inspiration and you know you flick through a few websites and things that you really like and, and we again we just wanted like we just wanted it to be local, like yeah, get local, slick, slick. Less is more. Sort less of is more. Professional photos, and that again will go down to like our branding. But let's quickly touch on, I guess, like the the crew, our crew. There's obviously you, myself, and a, and a few others. And as you mentioned, like I'm a professional athlete. Three of the boys are personal trainers, and Tim, who's a professional photographer. But quickly, I just want to talk about Tim because Tim's been brought in, mate, oh, and has been Tim for you guys who might not know Tim yet. You'll be able to. You'll probably see him all over across our social media. He's our head brewer. He's the one who's created this recipe and done an incredible job. And he has been the jack of all trades, like hasn't he? Full on linchpin. <laughs> like it, if we didn't have Timmy, like I don't know how we would have been able to find someone else that would have been able to fill a comparable role. Yep. And just to be in that early sort of startup phase and i guess as well again timmy affected from um COVID, yeah no wedding time as well yep. you know yep. a big part of his yearly trade is wedding photography and travel photography yep. as well so not being able to do that he really sunk his teeth in and a lot of the um evolved into not just the brew side of things but having incredible content uh photos at our disposal all the time but even having 13 years in design experience has really helped us refine that can to get it where it was as well definitely with design stuff um you know meeting with different companies and they're needing, you know, your artwork put into a certain template to then be printed. Pantones and things like that. Or t- Tim, that, that's just his bread and butter, yep. you know, where that would have been, you know, yourself or, or me having to probably learn a complete new skill set to try and get that there, where Tim's just like all over it. Yep, yep, definitely. I guess, guys, I want to give you a little bit of a background on Timmy. And, and Timmy, like I said, he's our brewer, but he's, he's, uh, main job is photography and, and he's been brewing in his garage for years now 10 you know a, a long time basically and, and you know brewing from home has always been a hobby for tim and then once tim sort of came on in an official capacity and then we started moving forward he had this recipe that he would sort of tweaked a few times and then that sort of came from and i'll just quickly grab sorry one of these can what's the date 10th of the 10th so, of the four. so again if you're watching on youtube and I, I've got these cans in front of me, right? And so along the way within our business, we had Tim researching, refining the recipe. So he'd brew two beers at a time, then he'd give them out to friends and family, or we all would, and then we'd get feedback on which one that you think would be better. And then say it was it was V1 or V2, we'd say, look, I like V2 better, V2 is better. Then he'd tweak V2 and make two other ones, yeah. up to the, maybe six. We, he probably brewed the same beer essentially about seven or eight times. Yep. And, and like the final recipe that we went, for wasn't too dissimilar to one of the original ones but 
little sort of refinements that were made to get it to exactly where we were. And I guess it's one thing I can only sort of empathise with it being in Tim's position that how nervous at times you would have been getting feedback from people. Yeah. The awesome thing about Timmy, he's got absolutely zero ego and yep. just wanted to always make the best product and be able to be confident, you know, in himself that, you know, we've, we've got we've got the product right. Um, I think back to obviously you weren't able to be there because you're still in the bubble, but we had our first tasting night when we were confident yep. that we got the recipe to where we needed to. We had about 13 of the boys. Um, I wouldn't have been that many, obviously, because of restrictions. <laughs> but we had a, a few of the boys around to Tim's place and we were hosting like a blind tasting. Yep. And there was about six different beers that we had and all similar style beers to ours, like a tropical style pale ale XPA type beers. And we were really nervous to put our beer up against those other well established well established beers yep. and how it would rank. So essentially you'd be trying the beer, writing down what you do or don't like about it. And then of the six that you tried, um, you know, where that would rate, where that would rank. And yep. you wouldn't know at all what beer that you were drinking. So Tim's sort of idea on it was that if we don't come like dead last, that means like <laughs> we've done all right. So, but still gives you the opportunity to get feedback and improve on it. But we actually came in second overall by one point. Um, the beer that beat us was uh, Filters XPA, which is an incredible beer that's only recently set up there. Yep. Big brew house in Sydney. And we were lucky enough to have the company of uh, one of the head brewers from Malt Shovel there on the day and he actually voted our beer was was the best on the night yeah i remember just, hearing that oh Timmy on the chat. Was so gassed up by yeah. it and we just finally knew then we've actually we've got a beer that that people are potentially going to really enjoy and and want to continue to purchase or consume so so from there it guys it essentially went from Tim's brew in his backyard, and I've if, again, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm holding up these cans, and they're, I've actually dated them because one day I'm going to put them in our brewery, and just we, we can be looked back. And this is the first ever one. It's on the the sixth of March, wow, 2020, and that is the 10th of April, and they're obviously empty now, but they're the first samples that we we're obviously absolutely frothing on. I'll be on the Cronulla BK Museum. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so t so once we nailed the recipe, boom, we've got the recipe, it's done. Now it's time to scale. So we go from like, you know, Timmy's garage to brewing what, how? So you're brewing 20 or 40 litres at a time, and then you step up, like if you're going commercial, you, your minimum would be like, 500 litres or something like that, which is a, a drastic step from, you know, brewing in your, in your garage. Yep. But if you're going to produce on enough scale to actually get it out there and get some traction, you know, yep. our first commercial brew was 6,000 litres. So so we went from 20 litres in Tim's garage... To 60,000 litres. To 6,000 litres in a brewery. Yeah, and, and to put that into perspective, like brewing 20 litres at a time is... That's less than half a normal keg. And our first bat commercial batch of beer it was fifty four kegs in two hundred and twelve cases. Like it's, it was <laughs> it's a, a lot, jump. you know. And it was we were like, you know, how much do we do? Because we had an option to do less, and we were, we were like, oh, you know, let's let's just go for it. Let's just yeah. go. Let's take the biggest one we can. And it was turned out to be the best idea we've probably made so yeah, far. Absolutely, and uh, I think that f really put us under the pump. That it's like we had to generate some sort of audience we had to sort of spread awareness and people understand that there was this new product coming and as much as we'll get in around to mates and family friends and things like that to try our samples of you know the pilot batches no one really knew what it was so we were relying on people having enough interest to purchase a new product that they hadn't really tried Tasted before, before yeah but I guess in um, liaising with a, a lot of other local venues as well, and probably I guess in particular, you know, Ferros Group, you know, having the opportunity in such an early stage of a startup to be like, we're going to give you guys a crack. We like that, you know, you're just young guys doing just that. They've been incredible. Like it's been amazing for us, you know, to be able to get that out there and be able to be, you know, highly consumed in such amazing venues here locally. Definitely, and I'll just echo those thoughts because, uh, you know, Public House, uh, the Botanical, 
Tarrant Point Pub, The Prince. Like The Prince, man, like in... In the Shire. In the fir- yeah, in the first week of February, me and Tim were, were sitting there like where I, he just got back from being in Iceland with um, Gemma and Ivy for almost a whole month away doing some photo work, but just basically their family holiday, to then I'd messaged him when he was away to get home, hey, I want to have a chat with you about something, sitting in this booth at the Prince Hotel saying, hey, what do you think about this, to then within 12 months to be that being the first venue to start pouring Boring. our beer. It was like, it, 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 it is a bit of a trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's so good though. And it, and it tells our story and it's like, man, we sat here like 12 months ago. We sat at Next Door. We sat at the Prince talking about it. 12, less than 12 months later, it's on tap. It's in a tin, in the fridge. It's on the menu. Like to see it on the menu at establishment, that is like a, a moment where it just hits you and it's like, wow. Yeah. Um, I quickly want to touch on probably some inspiration we got throughout the year, which was from some epic guys on the Gold Coast who do amazing beer, and that's the Black Hops Brewery. And we found this booklet that they made online. One of the boys printed it all off and, and got got it for us, and we all made sure that we read through it. And, and they were really transparent with you know their business and how they did things, and well, they even, were super inspirational to us, weren't they? Well, even their name, Black Hops, it's kind of like the the play on words of Black Ops. Like it's they call themselves like the least COVID, COVID beer yeah. operation, and yeah. it was almost like a start to finish tutorial of what it would. Take, take, take to start a, an independent beer company and yep, as yep. we read, th- read through it it was so exciting and it was so raw and genuine but on the same note it was like wow boys like we've got a lot of work on our hands like we haven't even touched on the licensing stuff <laughs> either as well like we had to employ a licensing solicitor and I had to become the licensee to get this and off the And to do licensee training. Yeah, and then licensee training to be like a legitimate, you know, commercial company. Like it's, yeah, it was just so not in our ballpark really. But again, Princess Fiona, Fiona Myatt, our um, licensing solicitor that just helped us navigate through yep. this so much was just you know, so, so helpful to us, so patient, you know, of young guys coming into a pretty foreign industry. Yeah, really thankful to her because obviously, you know, I guess applying for the type of license that we needed to, uh, the forms, you know, how long we'd have to wait, it was obviously a little bit daunting for us and we were kind of happy to sort of, um, you know, put it to her and she handled it all and just flick us what we needed to do and sign and return to her. Yeah, well, a couple of weeks or or just before um, engaging Fiona, we were already a couple of weeks in to applying for the wrong license. (laughs) Like you just, it's so difficult to navigate through it. So anyone out there that's like started an independent company, like beer company on their, on their own, like, Hats off to you. I don't know how how you've managed to do it because between the five of us plus a licensing solicitor, I feel like we've just managed to scrape through. <laughs> you, you just touched on uh, the the licensee training, and actually, I want to tell a quick story. So, obviously, starting a craft beer company, you know, I and all the boys, we wanted to do our RSA, make sure we had our responsible service of alcohol, which is obviously a certificate in New South Wales. And anyway, I'm doing mine online, and I got a. Uh, the link from I think it was you good you flicked me the link and I'm, and I'm doing a line answering all these questions obviously like you know what are signs of intoxication how do you ask someone to leave what's the fine if someone's you know on the premises just as if I, I was a glassy at Norley's or yeah pulling beers at, <laughs> beers at a yeah. pub yeah. and anyway so I do all the online assessment and it's like multiple choice and then you have to get like you know 10 out of 10 to pass into the next module and I'm, i pass all the modules and anyway i'm up to the last bit which is like the face-to-face uh funny <laughs> face-to-face interview, ass- yeah, interview yeah, yeah, assessment yeah. and it's over zoom and um this guy comes on the zoom and he asked me this he first of all uh checks my name and then uh didn't know that i played footy and he asked me this random question. I was like, oh, man, I'm fully just shat myself because he didn't say that he was going to ask this question. I had all these questions answered, ready to go. And he was like, oh, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. He's like, mate, well, you need to know. You need to know. And I was like, oh, all right, give me a second. So I'm just sitting here thinking, going, come on, come on, come on. Anyway, I got the question right and I answered it and he moved on to the assessment. And anyway, he's like... So, all right, mate, well, you know, we, we didn't get off to the best start, but, you know, how old are you? Like, you know, what are you, what are you doing? You're 18? You're 19? <laughs> I was like... 
Because he thinks that you probably are just trying to become a glassy or something. Because he, he thinks I'm just becoming a glassy down the pub just while I go to university or something like that. Yeah, far <laughs> out. I mean, it was so funny. I, I think I got interviewed by the same guy for my my licensee training, and I was having to like be a part of like role play scenario. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. He was he he was had to play that like he was a pissed guy in the <laughs> pub, and I'm having to kick him out. Like, <laughs> and, but you've got to provide the right protocol and your house policy and stuff yeah, like that. It yeah. was so intense. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And just quickly as well, I'll touch on like I guess obviously you know we spoke at the, at the top of the show about like COVID and and everything and. We obviously, I was stuck in the NRL bubble for a long time, which was obviously very hard. But we did all of our meetings Zoom. on Zoom. Yeah, that was pretty tough, wasn't it? Yeah, and and, and I guess um, you know some people I resonate with that style of learning or communication better with others, but yep. we didn't really have a choice. Like we had to do what we could to meet up every week, sometimes for half an hour or up to more than ninety minutes to get through what we had to and try and just do this whole thing via correspondence. And, you know, it was, you know, it was painstakingly, you know, brutal at times to just yep. try and be motivated to do stuff where there wasn't any face real connection face, yeah. at all. Yep. Like yep. we got into it, you know, to be working on this project together and hanging out more and drinking beers and stuff like that. And we'd been going months, like literally months and we hadn't even we'd had one face to face with you like yep. back in early early February or something yep. like that. Yep. Just before the COVID yeah. COVID happened. But all right, let's get stuck into I guess lessons learned or, you know, mistakes along the way. Cause in business and for us it hasn't been smooth sailing. We nah. we've we've obviously come through our challenges as much as everyone else. But one of the probably the biggest challenges that we had was uh you know our can design and the, the palette of it, of our of our can and and one thing as well we've we've been learning is to work with MOQs which is minimum order quantity and obviously us being a small startup you know having to sometimes branch out and go how you know there's MOQs at these bigger businesses obviously you know they supply well established companies that's been a lesson for us, hasn't it? Oh, hugely. Like if we're, we're talking about the, the cans in particular, we sort of were trying to you know, look into a few different options where, whether we're going to get completely um, printed cans like that or if we're looking at more just yeah. like a, a label that uh, in sort of like the packaging process of the product, a label kind of gets slapped and, and wrapped around the can. Like it's, it's, it's an option. Which we didn't like. We didn't like it. We just sort of wanted to decide if we're going to do it like Let's it's... do it right. Yep. We want to do it right. We want to have it looking as slick as possible from the get-go. And um, there was a couple of different companies that we could go with. And the one that we, we went with was great and was really helpful in sort of giving us feedback in the design process when we turned our artwork into the sort of template that they needed. So... Um, Upon giving them that artwork and getting it approved, they sent us a couple of prototypes yep. for cans. So we since have now known of speaking to other brewers and things like that, that it's not that unique of a scenario that what happened to us, but us being in the position we were, I, mate, I thought the shit was going to sink before we'd even left the dock, like <laughs> far out, that we signed off on these prototypes with a few minimal changes that we had to make. And if it wasn't for us requesting some of those final print cans to get sent to us before they were sent to the brewery for packaging, we would have rocked up on packaging day to see 50,000 of the cans that we had got printed that were not in alliance at all with what our yep. um, Pantones were. were, what our Pantones were yep. and what we'd sort of approved. So it was uh, some, some pretty... Um, intense conversations for for about a week and especially you know being the age that we are in a completely still foreign industry and having to go and meet with these guys i remember sitting in the car with timmy before we walked into this um this site and i was like oh are you ready for this like we knew it was going to be like <laughs> such a flex like that we had to get in there and be like look this is it's it's not acceptable and it would not you know hold anyone personally accountable but like in these early stages of our startup 
um, the brand, like the identity of the can. Super important. It's, it's everything, yep. you know, and, and we're joking about it when, when we're going back and forth and we're trying to sort of convince ourselves initially that the can was all right. The boy's gone, it said set Parramatta beer code because <laughs> the can was like yellow and royal blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, to their credit, the guys that we, we did print with came through and ended up like just being so supportive and said, look, you know, put our hand up. It's not to the quality that we, um, you know, go by. Yep. And we want to rerun run these for you guys at cost and make sure that we have it there for you um, by your filling day. So I think we ended up receiving the product like within less than a week of yep. the date that we had to fill the can. So it was... It was getting pretty tight, but we we managed to we managed to pull it off. <laughs> we got there. Um, just quickly before I move into like the brew day and the packaging day, you actually got a one of our tap decals sitting right next to you. If you want to show up to the camera yeah, for these ones here, for those of you watching on YouTube again, really um really stoked, really proud with how these turned out. And I guess I should mention as well, um, Jax and the guys at one eight hundred for promo locally here as well have yep. helped us a lot with our design stuff, these tap decals, they're just incredibly done. Like it's about like five mil acrylic. That's like 3d printed. They're so sick. So these things obviously sit on the head of the tap at the pub. Yeah. When you walk up to the bar and, and we wouldn't, again, a thing that we wouldn't have, have known, but how much influence one of these things has over what you're going to purchase when you work to the bar, walk to the bar is massive. So we wanted to have something obviously that aligned with what our can looks like, but yep. just something sick that's going to stand out as well and kind of be pretty unique when sitting up against, you know, your other bigger brands, your Great Northerns, your VBs, your Bolters and things like that as well. Yep, yep, 100%. I love it. And we're so happy again with how it turned out. But I touched on, you know, the brew day and the packaging today. So essentially we've got our recipe now and we need to scale. We've um, done, I guess, a tour of a lot of facilities about where we want to contract brew and we ended up uh, deciding on the rocks and, and Scotty there – the head guy has been absolutely tremendous, been so helpful. And AD and Zach and all the boys there have been incredible, haven't they? Yeah, it's, it's, I think that's one thing that's been a big inspiration to us as well as like having not even met them before. Like what you said, the guys from Black Hops, like it felt like we were being supported in this venture that it, it made it. We hadn't even we met them. Yeah. We hadn't even met them, but we've, with Scotty and 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 Zach and Aidy, like they just they just welcomed us, and, and, and you know, I think one that's one of the biggest gifts that you can give to someone is literally just believing in them that yep. you could do it, and they've they they believed in us, you know, and Definitely. I should mention as well. Um, Pat and Joel from Willie the Boatman, you know, yep. they were one of the first guys that we even met with before the rocks about potentially contracting out of there, which we will be sort of continuing to do a bit of work with them in the future and just being tremendous support, so positive, so passionate, so enthusiastic about the pro project that we're like from the get go that you guys will and can do this. Definitely. Know? And it's it, that has been one thing I've really found out about this craft beer industry since we've sort of got in is this, the people are so friendly. They offer advice, so helpful. Like we've been in walking in with pretty much our eyes wide open and just asking questions left, right and centre. And to hear them be so helpful has really been beneficial for our, us, mm. you know, starting up. Um, all right, I want to talk about packaging today. So, so brew day's done. The beer's gone in. Our recipe's gone in. Packaging day, which was probably my most, probably my favourite day we've had so far in the business, because a hundred percent. And if anyone hasn't <laughs> hasn't seen it yet, they'll have to have a watch of Zane's video that he did. Yes. Zane so check out check out our social media at. Cronulla Beer Co. There's um, a video that our videographer made, Zane Wilson from Wilson Visuals. He done this incredible video of us, like you know, playing guitar and, and playing the drums, just and having fun, just Skits having fun. Brewery, and it tells the story really well from like the start of a, a brew day to your packaging day, and then getting it out for delivery. And it was just, 
yeah, it was really cool how he sort of put it all together to tell that part of the story. So packaging day was the day where our beer got put into our can, and this can that I'm holding up is the first can that came off the production line. So the first one, yeah, the very first one. So the the beer would come down, uh, the cans would go in, the beer would go in the cans, come down the conveyor belt, um, put in a, a pack tech, which is basically where the beers are in a six pack, come down again the conveyor belt where the beers would then be put into our case our carton then through a tape machine down the trolley and then put onto a pallet and then that afternoon our beers which we were again personally delivering to our local establishments bars restaurants um in the shire and again i want to say a huge shout out to all these people because the local restaurants and pubs and and uh, bars and etc have been so so supportive yeah. haven't they I, I don't want to miss anyone but the Alouche boys from next door and sea level Harry and Mario from CC Babcock Nathan Miranda pub um, you know Simon Johnson that's just supported us from the early days with the Ferros group yep. you know there's Loftus Bottle Shop Loftus o Bottle, Bottle Shop O'Brien's yeah there's been guys there Creedon Lane yep. um, Dougie at Cronulla Kitchen yep. like um, even Null and Nulla who are just reopening just about to reopen refit and it is said to us before they were even while they weren't even open said when we reopen when we relaunch we want you guys to be a part of it and it's just been so awesome to have that support you know some people hadn't even uh you know, tasted the beer, let alone seen our price price yeah. list, and we're like, we we want to have it. We want to give you guys the opportunity. Yeah, you know, which is so cool. So we had the packaging day, and we had a lot of cases uh, assigned to our wholesale partners. We also had a number of cases assigned to our online sales, which basically sold out within six hours. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably been one of the the hardest things for us to to do has been to keep up with the demand because currently as we sit here right now our cases our online portion of our business is actually sold out at the moment and, and we're getting a lot of inquiries about people you know asking when the, the beer can be available for online purchase again so again we just want to say you know thank you for your patience we are going to have some more uh on st- online Probably likely next week we'll, yeah uh, we'll before christmas so we'll have available online you, purchase again you will be able to get some before christmas and um yeah again we, we thank you for your patience but um you know that again took us into probably the once the deliveries were done that day it was i think it was a friday you know we were, we were pretty happy and then the first pour which happened at the prince the first ever time our beer went into a schooner glass and again it's at the prince where in Kiri, where you where you and Timmy essentially sat down and had a conversation about you know the beer company again it, it just shows relevance to our story yeah so all the boys are there guards Timmy Wags yourself are there for a beer that afternoon and just to I guess draw attention to again like how much of an incredible and supportive industry this is the first beer of ours that I ever had at that pub that day I shared with Kane from Sunday Road who they're like making incredible beers yep. here in the Shire, their local brewery, if you haven't gone and checked it out yet, in, in, in Kiri, Kiri, Sunday Road, yep. make amazing beers. And he was like, mate, I've been following you on social. It was like, obviously, I knew this was coming. Of course, I'm going to come down and have a beer with you guys and support you. And I was epic. just like, dude, that is such epic behaviour, eh? Like, mm. Again, like, another, another you know, legend in the industry. Yeah. And there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, so that was real successful, you know, the, the, the first day. And then we sort of did like a bit of a pub crawl around the few pubs that had them. And, and a, few, a lot of our mates came and they were having a good time. And, and they, I guess that's when it, it kind of, our, our brand or, you know, our all the hard work we'd done so far and getting, you know, I guess our social media and our marketing and, and our branding on point was where people were starting to, you know, take photos and it, the, the word was starting to get out there mm-hmm. on social media. Like you said, Brad from Sunday Road said, you know, I've been following you guys from social media. The other day, a few of the boys and myself were actually playing golf at Cronulla Golf Club and we were in the practice nets just warming up before we were about to tee off. And one of the these guys said, "Oh, to his mate, mate, have you have you had that Cronulla beer yet?" <laughs> and I'm sitting there, my ears just perk up, and I'm like, "You know, I'm not going to say anything right now. I'm just going to listen to see what he says." <laughs> and his mate goes, "Nah, mate, I haven't yet. How is it?" He's like, "Mate, yeah, oh, mate, it's outstanding, so good." <laughs> good that, and I was like, "Oh my, all right, well, I'm going to say something now." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he if he said to his mate, "Nah, it's oh, freaking man. shit," I would have been like, "Oh, I'm Absolutely. not going to." Horrendous. I'm not going to say that. But not say anything. But yeah, I, I went over just before we tit off. I was like, mate, you know, um, 
how you going, mate? Like, my name's Chad and myself and um, a few of the boys here, we're actually, you know, we actually own the beer company. And he's like, oh, really? Oh, how you going, Chad? He recognised me. And I was like, yeah. Mate, so, you know, you, you enjoyed it? He's like, mate, yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And then I was like, oh, where'd you get it? And he's like, I had it on uh, tap at Miranda Pub. And I was like, oh, mate, like, look, just want to say, like, you know, really thankful for your support and, um, you know, I really, really appreciate it. And he's like, mate, yeah, no worries, mate. So, so have good, a good mate. round. And um, <laughs> that was That's like, epic. that was that was epic. But, um I'll touch on social media quickly and then maybe a bit of merchandise before we finish up. But, um, you know, social media these days in 2020 is a massive part of business and something we've really wanted to focus on, especially with our website, our, our blogs, you know, our vlogs, even now we've got a Cronulla Beer Chat podcast. Uh, you know, we wanted to be someone who, who puts out a lot of content and, and has a lot of fun with our brand. Yeah, and you have to have presence. And I think it's, you know, pretty easy to come up with content when you're sort of marketing something like a product like beer. Yep. But the reality is, I feel across all industries at the moment, whether it be you building your own personal brand or if you're in the fitness industry, if you have a cafe or a restaurant, like you, you need to be visible. Like it's yep. the first thing that you do. Like if you hear about a new restaurant or cafe or bar that you want to vi- visit or even so much if you were looking to engage somebody for landscaping services or building or something You like want to that. see the work they've done. And, and it's probably more... Um, relevant these days that you would go straight to Instagram or Facebook and yep. search their handle before even the likes of Google, like yep. really. And so so we knew how I- important that was to start building a bit of an audience. And, and I guess what we've always said is, is tell our story. You know, we haven't wanted to shy away from the fact that we don't really know what we're doing. We're having fun. We're just yep. young guys having a crack that, you know, love beer, like love where we, we come from and see how we can sort of bring that all together. Definitely, definitely. And it, and it has been super fun. I think we've done such an yeah. incredible job and that's probably leads me into a little bit uh, about my role within the business. And, I, and I'll probably get into it a little bit more maybe on another podcast. But obviously within the bubble, like I was, you know, uh, restricted with a lot of the work I could have done. But essentially, you know, I guess the branding and the content is something that, you know, I gravitate towards too. And obviously having things like my own podcast and having my own YouTube channel and uh, something that I really wanted to would to push was, you know, that again to, as you just said, was to echo, like tell the story about, you know, how – how we created because people essentially like they resonate to the story yeah and i think we've done an incredible job with that so especially if it's it's a local independent product as well we are independent as well by the way on the back of the can you'll see certified independent so it's something that's really is important to us yeah and um i think that you know a lot of you know speaking you know to go back to some of the obstacles that we've you know faced so far and probably will continue to face so far is that when you are getting inquiries come from larger venues and things like that it's so common for these bigger venues to be heavily contracted by some yeah. of the bigger players in the game yep. and not have a lot of allowance of tap space for small independent companies so anyone any venue out there that gives us a, a crack that gives us the opportunity to supply them it, it is really really like doing the right thing by small local business because they could be getting you know still pretty good um product for probably a, a lot more of a marginalized price than what you're buying a boutique craft beer for definitely and and i think that's what i guess covid has done to us all as well as it really has echoed like it's it's good to support local like support yeah. small like support local business i think that has really come along in 2020 would you agree a hundred percent and you know my girlfriend ellie she owns a restaurant as you know and like having to be shut the entire time through covid um as you know my gym was shut as well like that was pretty hard on us yeah. and i think coming out the back end of that and knowing know how grateful you should be just to have a job has not only you know relit the fire to be back at work again but just sort of the i guess mutual respect that you have for anyone in small business that's grinding that you just want to support them so yeah yep. you know eat out get your coffee from small coffee shops and things like that and and yep. And you should do that regularly because a lot of people, these these small businesses, that's what they're doing to you know put food on the table for, for their, their families. families yeah, one hundred percent. 
I love that. All right, big fella. Let's uh, we might wrap it up there, eh? Awesome. That mate. was um, an epic chat. Um, thank you very much for listening today, guys. Look, if you want to jump on our website, we do have some merchandise actually available too. We've got a few shirts. We've got some hats coming before Christmas. We've got some really cool merch. Coming. We've got some really cool merch coming. We've got a really new slogan we want to share with you guys, which is I think going to be an yeah. absolute ripper. Um, but yeah, make sure you uh, you can check us out www.cronullabeerco.com.au You can also check out our social media at Cronulla Beer Co. today. Goody, thanks very much for coming on, brother. Thanks so much. And if you want a sample, probably going to have to get down to your local. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we are planning to restock our online store before Christmas. So make sure you stay tuned to our social media. Don't forget to check out the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Stay 100. Let's get it. Yup. Yup.